This is a very brief recording of the um, bird diversity slides. Our first group of birds are the loons. Loons are mainly aquatic birds who swim and can catch fish below the water surface. They have webbed feet and they mainly eat fish. One of the things that sets loons apart from some of the other birds is the fact that their bones are actually quite heavy, as are their bodies compared to a normal bird. But these heavy bodies are good for swimming and particularly for diving. But because of their greater weight, they need to have um, a large land area to kind of taxi to run to take off. And then they tend to land on water to smooth their landing. They have heavy, dense feathers to provide waterproofing. And their legs are really far back on the body that allow them to swim very well. But it makes them very poor walkers on land. And here are our loons. You can see in that middle picture just how far back their legs are. And ducks, geese, and swans are um, the order and seriformes. They also are found in aquatic habitats. They're medium to large birds. Their precocial young are known particularly for imprinting and can imprint on things that are not, in fact, their parents. They have webbed feet. They are herbivores or omnivores. And um, the ducks specifically um, can be more omnivorous. Geese and swans tend to be your herbivores. They eat a lot of vegetation and because they eat a lot of vegetation, they also excrete quite a bit. Um, and they, as mentioned here, they defecate frequently up to every 15 minutes because keeping that much material in their body would make them very heavy, which means they don't necessarily extract a lot of nutrient from their food. The geese and swans generally mate for life. And here we have some geese and swans. It's worth noting that the Canada goose has more than 11 subspecies that have been recognized. Ducks do show sexual um, dichromatism or sexual dimorphism, difference in sexual colors, um, males being more colorful than the females during breeding season. They may vary their diet with season going from omnivorous to herbivore. Um, they may eat more invertebrates and mollusks prior to molting and breeding um, and then switching to foliage and seeds when they're not doing those things. They may form new pair bonds every year. Some may be a, together for longer than that. And these are some local duck species. The cormorants are another group you may be familiar with. They um, have been seen on campus, much like the um, ducks and geese and I don't think any swans, at least not in recent history. Uh, cormorants are well known for diving underwater. They actually do dry their feathers. They're not as waterproof as other birds. And they are colonial nesters. You can see the double crested cormorant here drying his feathers. And another one here showing off that beautifully colored beak. The herons, the egrets, and the bitterns have representatives that are commonly found on campus. These are all wading birds with relatively long legs. They have long S-shaped necks. They're generally carnivores. And um, the green heron, the black-crowned night heron, and the striated heron are known for utilizing twigs, insects, flowers, pieces of bread, et cetera, putting it on the water surface to attract fish, and then grabbing the fish. So they're actually fishing. These are some representatives of the group. The green heron and gray blue heron, as well as sometimes egrets, can be seen on campus. And I believe um, an American bittern was seen a couple years ago on campus. 
New World vultures are the vultures that we have in North America. They are more closely related to storks than the vultures that are found in um, the old world. Um, they have naked heads and necks with no feathers. This allows them to actually decrease the bacterial load on their heads. It keeps them healthier. They utilize smell and sight to find food and their feet are well adapted for walking, but they have very weak claws. In addition, they're going to be looking for dead food to eat. Vultures are not actually going to kill their prey outright. I'm just showing you the turkey and the black vulture, as well as the California condor, who's part of this group. The hawks include, um, let's see for a moment. Some of these that you may have seen, specifically the red-tailed hawk, you may have seen around here. The hawks tend to show reversed sexual size dimorphism with the female being larger than the male. This is likely related to the investment of what goes into creating the eggs. Hawks kill with their talons, so their claws on their feet. They cannot kill with their beaks. Some species in here are monogamous mating for life. Falcons are different from hawks. They will kill with their beak by crushing the neck vertebrae of their prey. And they will frequently kill prey in flight. So these are once again the hawks. Some more hawks and falcons also included on this as well as the eagles, which are part of this group. It's worth noting that the immature bald eagle looks remarkably like a golden eagle sometimes. Turkey, grouse, and um, the rest of this group, the pheasants, partridges, chukar, are in the same group, the galliformes. There is a wide variety to this group, some being sexually dimorphic and polygonous, others being no sexual dimorphism and relatively um, monogamous. Turkeys um, roost in trees at night in the wild and the male grouse have special display feathers and air sacs that they utilize during courtship dances. They are all capable of short flights but they tend to not fly very far. They have short takeoffs, explosive takeoffs, and then hide in cover. With the exception of the rouse, uh, ruffed grouse, the grouse do form loops, which we talked about in the slide presentation. So here we have the chukar, which has been um, introduced from elsewhere, mainly as a game bird, the ruffed grouse, northern bob white, and then some more of this group. Note the wild turkey there showing um, both a male showing off and a female. Brings us to the owls. The barn owls are very different from the rest of the owls. They are one of the world's most widespread bird species. So they have a heart-shaped face, which is not seen in the rest of the owls. So their eyes are immovable and their ears are asymmetrical. Your typical owls, um, have ear tufts as opposed to that heart-shaped head. And um, they, as you learned from your present or your lab the other week, produce owl pellets um, from the nest from the, the mating parts left over from their prey items. So we have a wide variety of owls here. And you can see the barn owl um, in comparison to the others here. Woodpeckers tend to have some sexual dimorphism, um, but not in all. They're woodland birds. There are many species of woodpeckers on campus. They are primarily insectivores, eating insects out of tree bark. They have zygodactyl feet with two toes forward, two toes backwards, and their tongues are long, sticky, and the ends are barbed. You can find the downy woodpecker um, the red-bellied woodpecker, the hairy woodpecker, easily on campus. Um, 
you may also find the northern flicker or pileated woodpecker nearby. The ivory-billed woodpecker who is up there is likely extinct. This brings us to the chickadees and the titmice. They um, are known for pounding on seeds and nuts to get into them. These birds tend to be social and inquisitive. They can frequently be found in flocks together. They live in wooded areas and they will not migrate in the winters. They will stay year round. You are likely familiar with the black capped chickadee and tufted titmice that are found around here. The wood warblers have very thin beaks, primarily for eating insects. In this group, only the males sing, and the nests in this group are small open cut nests. These are examples of wood warblers, some of which can be found in this area. The cardinal grouping contains medium to large songbirds. It contains the cardinals, the grosbeaks, buntings, and the dixissel. Um, there are three species where the females do sing. Most of these are monogamous species with sexual dimorphism, and many of them are neotropical migrants. You may be familiar with some of the species on this slide, or at least, at least the northern cardinal. And then these may be ones you are less familiar with. The crows and jays are some of our most intelligent birds. <coughs> they have large feet and strong builds for their size. They're monogamous and um, they can not only speak English, they can count, they can make tools and we are frequently impressed by their intelligence. They may not be the prettiest birds in the world, but they are remarkably intelligent. And blue jays um, are also known for being quite bullies. Um, rather, yeah, um, they will bully other birds near um, bird feeders. The kinglets are some of our smallest birds that you can find around here. They will live on campus. They're insectivorous. They're quite active and they are much smaller than a sparrow. You can see both the ruby crowned and the golden crowned kinglet in this region. Wrens are one of our other small birds in this area. They have thin curved beaks. They usually have their tails pointing upwards when they're walking and males and females look identical. Carolina wren, house wren, or winter wren could be found in these areas. The marsh wren on here I mentioned has a song vocabulary or a song ability sometimes of over 300 songs. The New World sparrows include most of our normal sparrows with the exception of the house sparrow, um, which is an old world sparrow. Sparrows are found on all continents with the exception of Australia and Antarctica. They have conical beats and they are gregarious in winter groupings, but territorial during breeding seasons. The lark sparrow, dark eyed junco, song sparrow, fox sparrow, eastern towhees in this group, American tree sparrow, chipping sparrow. This is also going to include things like the indigo and Leslie, um, lazuli buntings, and then the white throated and white crowned sparrows, which can be found here. Pigeons and doves are our last group. They are found worldwide with the exception of polar regions. They are primarily herbivores. Remember that they do create crop milk for their offspring. They tend to form large flocks and can breed in colonies. And their feathers are relatively loosely attached to their skin compared to other groups. The passenger pigeon and the dodo shown on these slides are um, extinct and the rock dove there is one that is, is actually our common pigeon is known for producing that crop milk. 